Turning now to other news we're covering on RT. Confrontation between Libyan rebels and pro-Qaddafi forces showing no sign of easing. Battles have been raging near the towns of Sirte and Bani Walid, two of the few remaining strongholds of the fallen regime. Forces loyal to the colonel fired for rockets from Bani Walid, where two of Qaddafi's sons are believed to be leading the armed resistance. This despite the interim government seeking to negotiate a peaceful resolution. The deadline for Qaddafi loyalists to surrender has been extended to Saturday. As for the colonel himself, in his latest audio message, the ousted leader claimed he was still in Libya and vowed to never leave his ancestors' homeland. Meanwhile, life in the Libyan capital still struggles after falling into the rebel hands with a celebratory mood dampened by fears of anarchy setting in. Artis Maria Finoshina has more from Tripoli. A city celebrates. For more than 10 days, the Libyan capital has been rejoicing in the dictator's fall. He wanted to hang his portrait here on the central square for his rule's 42nd anniversary. But we put our flag instead. We won. We're so happy without him. It seems in the last two weeks, rebel fighters have fired more bullets into the air than were shot during the assault on Tripoli earlier in August. All Libya free now. It's very, very good. Mr. Gaddafi, Colonel Gaddafi is dictator. He, he told all the people love me, all the people love me. Now you see, not love him. All of us, we are freedoms. We don't like Gaddafi. We don't like, we don't like him. But away from jubilant crowds, we meet those who are not so pleased. Abdul Rahman lives in Tripoli's Abu Slim district, historically pro Qaddafi. When the rebels arrived, his sister was badly injured. She's still in hospital in Tunisia. Abdul Rahman doesn't want to show his face on camera and insists on a hidden location for the interview. He says revolution has brought much fear in its wake. There is no peace. There is no safety in the city. We don't let our children outside when it's dark. We're afraid. We always wait for something bad. When Gaddafi was here, at least we didn't have to sleep awake like we do now. Abdul Rahman says he also wanted change and a brighter future for his country, but not this way. People are dying on both sides. The city is destroyed and no one cares. Do they seriously think that they changed it for the better? Don't lie to yourself. Just look around. Is that what you wanted? And what is around is a scene of widespread destruction and social chaos. The badly damaged buildings matched by the rising stink of garbage and decomposing bodies. Armed youngsters roam the streets barely old enough to understand that what they carry are weapons, not toys. Many shops, schools and hospitals are closed, while the city's cemeteries are growing bigger and bigger. Shortly after Tripoli fell into rebel hands, the National Transitional Council, Libya's new authority, claimed it was moving here from Benghazi. But weeks have passed and there is still no sign of its presence on the ground or of order being restored. The city is functioning by itself and treading a fine line between freedom and anarchy. Marif Noshna, RT, Tripoli, Libya.